All right, example two is going to be a little bit more difficult because as you can tell by the heading, it says you need to combine fractions before using your identities. Well, if we want to simplify this, obviously the right side looks a little bit more difficult. So we're just going to simplify the right. And we need a common denominator. So our common denominator is going to end up being 1 minus the sine of a alpha. That's an alpha times 1 plus the sine of alpha. And so what's going to happen is we're missing one of these parentheses in each fraction. I'm probably going to run out of room. I'll put the alpha down there. So the first, the first fraction right here is missing a 1 plus sine of alpha. So we're going to have to multiply the top by 1 sine of alpha. 1 plus the sine of alpha. So the second parentheses here is missing a 1 minus sine of alpha. So we need to multiply this by a 1 minus sine of alpha. <clears throat> so when we do that, now we have a common denominator. We can add things together. We're going to say on the right, we have a 1 plus sine of alpha plus 1 minus sine of alpha. And then on the bottom, we have a 1 minus sine squared alpha. Hmm. Weird. So on top, what happens is we can cancel out your positive sine of alpha and your negative sine of alpha. And you get just a 2 on the top. Now, if you remember correctly, from your Pythagorean identities, that we know that the sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha is equal to 1. So if we were to, oops, I forgot my square on the bottom. So if we were to, there's my square. So if we were to solve this equation right here for cosine, we would end up getting cosine squared alpha equals 1 minus sine squared alpha. And what you'd have to do is you're going to have to substitute this in for the bottom. <clears throat> and so then here, what we're going to have is a, a 2 on the left. You have a 2 secant squared alpha. Let me erase it. That's going to bug me. 2 secant squared alpha is equal to a 1 over cosine squared alpha. And actually, we have a 2 on top. So let me erase that. So if you have a 2 up here, well, we know that if we separate this 2 from this 1 over cosine squared alpha, we know that 1 over cosine squared alpha is equal to a secant squared alpha. So we can say 2 secant squared alpha equals 2 times a secant squared alpha. So that means our this is going to check off and work. So we proved both sides correct. <clears throat>